Welcome to the Creative Cows DSLR Essentials Podcast. I'm Robbie Carmen, And I'm Rich Harrington. You know, Rich, you go out and you spend, you know, a lot of money on a lens and you take it home and you expect it to be 100% perfect. But the fact of the matter is that every lens, wide angle, you know, telephoto or anything in between, has some inherent problems with it and when it comes to issues like distortion. Yeah, and that's going to be magnified by zoom lenses because they have to go through such a wide range. Yep, and you also see it in ultra-wide angle lenses especially is where I notice it most often. Yeah, and the good news is is that this can be fixed, uh, but sort of in an unexpected way. The latest version of Take Photoshop... Take apart my lens? Well, oh, no void of warranty. <laughs> sure, exactly. Know? So uh, the latest version of Photoshop, mm -hmm. uh, Photoshop CS5, added a new feature in the, that's available for still users, but if you're using Photoshop Extended, which is the version that's included with Creative Suite, right. you can actually open up video clips and modify them in Photoshop. Cool, so if I have some barrel distortion or something on a video shot, you're telling me I can fix it? Yeah. That's cool. We choose File Open, and we just grab our video file. Okay. And again, you have to have Extended, but if you know we open up this clip here, you're gonna see that it's gonna open up and it's going to just come in as a video file, and you'll see the video layer there with the icon. Got it. And if you look at this one, you know, this was shot with, uh, you know, on a Canon 7D. Yep. And we have a little bit of distortion here. Let's zoom in here, and okay. you'll see that as we sort of go across. And I'm just going to call up the rulers here and pull this down. And you see there how the brick is sort of bending as it gets over now, to the side. Now, I'm assuming that this was a straight shot to begin with. It's not just an, it's not just a trick, right? It's a really it's actually a slight distortion, but the camera was actually lined up straight and perfectly level against the wall there. And it's going to happen more at the edges. Yep. And there's other issues, you know, like lens hood, a vignette it can get brighter or darker. Sure. So, in this case, you know, it's not bad, no. but we can improve it. Nope. So, you know, so let's go ahead here, and the first step is we're going to make this a smart object. Right click and convert that to a smart object. Okay. And what does a smart object do for me? A uh, smart object turns it into sort of a nested uh, video file inside here. So it's a lot like pre composing okay. or collapsing. Sure. And it allows you to run a filter on the entire video clip as opposed to just a single frame. Oh, okay, cool. So now, and it also turns filters into non destructive filters. Cool. So we could choose Lens Correction, and then it pops up with a new dialog, okay. and it says, okay, well, tell me what you used. So we shot this on a Canon. We did. And you see it automatically did a little bit of fixing. Wow, and it even tells us what different models of uh, cameras we have there. That's cool. Yeah. So we could say, well, this was shot on a 7D. Yep. So we're seeing here some different lens models. Now, there's not necessarily profiles for all these. But, but, so, but can, Adobe, Adobe releases these profiles as they yeah. become known to them, right? Browse Lens Profile Creator online. Yep. We'll take you online, and you can actually create your own profiles for your lenses. Cool. So if you have some crazy obscure lens, you can create a profile for it. Yeah. But even so, you know, you can go in here, and there are other, you know, in this particular case, someone hasn't made a specific profile of that lens with this 7D. Got it. And let's go with the 17 to 50 millimeter here. Okay. And what's happened is it attempts to fix some of that distortion. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and sort of toggle that, you know, we've got those settings. What I would usually then do is go on over here to custom. Okay. So we can toggle the preview sort of off and on, and it's pretty minimal here. Right. But under the manual here, you've got options for basically removing sort of the pin cushion there. And you see there, like we could or You could even enhance it if you wanted to. Yeah. But we're basically dealing with the fact here that, you know, you've got a little bit of barrel distortion. So yep. we could push that middle a little bit so that line isn't curving as much. Got it. Plus, little subtle things like chromatic aberration. Yep. Lenses tend to have a little bit of fringe sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And you can really see that when you start to zoom in on some of the colors. So if we take this into 100%, you know, or even a little bit further there, yeah, you that see that little, that little pink stripe on his, uh, his sweater there is kind of bleeding over a little bit. Yeah. So we can go ahead there and compensate for some of the fringe. Cool. Now, and, and this see is not, there how it's toning down the magenta fringe. Right. Now, this is something, obviously, that does take quite a bit of time to sort of finesse, right? But, I mean, if you're, you, after you build that profile, right, 
it's not like something that you have to do every single time, right. manually adjusting every single clip. After you build the profile for your specific camera and for your specific lens, you can simply load it up, apply that profile, and voila, you're done. Yeah, and you're not gonna do this on every clip. Right. You're just gonna do it when it's bothering you. So gotcha. particularly on a close-up shot or with a wide-angle lens, you know, you can, though, compensate for a little bit if you've got low, like, keystoning happening. Sure. Lower high angle. Yep. And the ability in there to actually compensate for vertical. See there how we're sort of, you know, it was just a little off angle there, and mm -hmm. look how that line's now sort of straight. Cool. It's literally sort of canting the footage in 3D space. Cool. And so when you do all that, you know, it's got the ability, it's auto-scaling that footage up, Mm -hmm. We can go ahead and, you know, take a look at that. We can even draw a straight line here, and it will rotate the footage, and, you know, if you were Oh, so if you had, like, a horizon line issue or something like that, you could adjust automatically for that. Yeah. Cool. And it compensates for all sorts of things, and then you simply click OK, and it applies it as a, as a smart filter there, so you could turn it off and on and sort of see the before and after. Very cool. Now, when you're all done with that, you're going to go ahead and send that out. You're going to choose File export render to video okay pops up with a new dialog oh, and you can choose your codec and, and all those other options there as well yeah standard quicktime dialog box click settings dial in whatever codec you need to use and if you had other codecs like prores or whatever on your system you could choose from those as well absolutely whatever you're using for your edit system yep. dial in the frame rate millions of colors it'll pass the audio through cool you know set that all up get it so you're happy with it and you know, just render it out. It's gonna go ahead and spit it out at the same frame rate as the document. Mm -hmm. You could, if you don't need the whole shot. You can even trim it right there. Mm -hmm. You could specify the number of frames you want. That's very cool. Or use the selection down here to, to drag out the frames and that'll limit it. And very straightforward, it'll just spit out the shot. I would recommend that you, you know, rename this with an underscore so you don't write over your original yeah, shot. Yeah, that name of the file, underscore lens correction or something like that, yeah. exactly. And then just click render and, and let it go. Cool. Now, it's gonna take a while. But it works very well. On top of all of this, though, over at Adobe Labs, if you do a search for lens profile, mm -hmm. they actually have a creator. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a target. And you could set up your camera with lenses and shoot this target. So this is different from the profiles that other people have made and they're already available. This you, is letting you do it. Yeah, with any lens and any camera. Cool. So you, you set your camera up. You shoot square onto this target. It's a bunch of checker boxes. Mm -hmm. And then you load that and you tell it this is the lens and this is the camera I used, and it will create its own preset. So if you've got a bunch of old prime lenses or you know, you're know you a Canon shooter using a Nikon prime, you could still make it work and just create your own profiles using this tool and then store them to cut down on that so you have your own presets for your own lenses. That's very cool. Well, I think I think for a lot of people are gonna find this really handy because you know, especially you know, crop cameras like the 7D and stuff like that, you know, you're gonna wanna shoot with these really, really wide angle lenses to get that sort of same field of view that you would on a full frame sensor. And because of that, you're often presented with issues like barrel distortion and stuff like that. And it's cool because, you know, Photoshop is a tool that a lot of people are comfortable with already. And it's a great new feature in CS5, really easy to do. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a really powerful tool for correcting uh, uh, problematic lenses. You're not gonna set any land speed records, so reserve no. it for the most problematic shots, but it has optical distortion, it can fix the fringe, you could lighten or darken vignette if you had issues from the hood. So it does a bunch of things all at once, straightening, angling the shot, cut, cool. you know, taking advantage of keystoning, so it's really, really useful. Very cool. Good, so hope you found that useful. You're gonna to wanna to check out Photoshop Extended. You could download a free 30-day demo from Adobe's website. And be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where we actually have a Photoshop for video podcast mm -hmm. that explores a lot of workflows of using Photoshop as a tool for video production. Very cool. Okay. And uh, there's the Creative Cow Magazine too. So hope you enjoyed this week's episode and we'll see you next week.